In the Buddhist view, compassion is inseparable from bodhicitta. And bodhicitta in Sanskrit literally translates to enlightened mind or enlightened heart. So compassion is really one of the seminal, two seminal aspects of bodhicitta. The two seminal aspects are compassion and wisdom. And really you cannot develop compassion without developing the wisdom aspect. And likewise, you cannot develop wisdom or knowledge or insight without developing the compassion. So today we're going to talk just maybe a little bit about the compassion. And really from a very basic view, compassion um, uh, arises in us with um, what Rinpoche referred to as altruistic emotions. So he talked about things like uh, sympathy and concern actually and um, really generating and developing these kinds of emotions as a basis for compassion but in its in its um, in its uh, best form compassion really is just kind of an open-minded presence that is nourishing for both the person who is say giving compassion and the and the and the being that is receiving the compassion um, and so that's the basis but it's not something that we find necessarily easy to do straight away sometimes uh, Rinpoche really emphasized that it's a very gradual path and it's a, about deepening um, your capacity to uh, experience and express compassion and um, because um, for most of us when we talk about developing altruistic emotions emotions you know, can be quite tricky because um, they're often very caught up in our ideas about ourselves and our ideas about others. And so part of the journey to really, um, or journey is a wrong word, part of um, generating compassion and really contemplating compassion in the process, you begin to uh, decentralize your self or your preoccupation with yourself. And... Um, so I maybe talk about Rinpoche spoke about how there's two main ways in the Buddhist view to generate compassion. The first way is really through a sense of moral um, obligation that you feel morally that you're obliged. And the second way is through the um, development or the ex from the expression of altruistic emotions like sympathy or concern. And um, and often, you know, as I said, we, we think emotions are like capricious and changeable and unreliable. So, you know, sometimes we presume that the first way through this kind of moral obligation is the most um, uh, appropriate way to generate compassion. But Rinpoche actually said from the Buddhist view, this is not the case, actually. From the Buddhist view, just generating out of moral obligation really um, you can't sustain compassion in that way and really actually it's through the feeling of altruistic emotions that we are able to generate compassion and sustain it and um, through that process then we have to clarify our emotions a little bit to to start to become aware of our bias you know what we like what we don't like um, what we're attracted to, what we're averse to. Um, Rinpoche, when he taught about the altruistic emotions and he named them like, he gave examples of sympathy and concern. Um, he said that they um, are far less capricious actually, these emotions and some of the other emotions we experience. So they're a, a little more stable actually and they're considered um, to be wholesome um, emotions so um, creating the causes and conditions for those emotions to arise is actually a wholesome thing to do and also it helps to engender compassion and with the altruistic emotions he spoke about how there are three conditions that need to be present um, and I'm going to say this again because I'm um, that really creating compassion is about creating the causes and conditions for compassion to arise uh, naturally. And 
Uh, so if from the Buddhist view, um, there are three conditions that need to be present for compassion to arise. First is a cognitive. Uh, so you have to see suffering and actually recognize it as suffering. And Rinpoche said that's when you're beginning to actually see things as they are. And the second one then is from seeing the suffering and recognizing it, then you are moved by what you see in some way. So the altruistic emotions like concern or sympathy would arise. And then the third one is the person moved by the, the you know, seeing the, um, the suffering and moved by it then it moves into some kind of action. But um, when you actually examine these three things, you know, you um, realize even just seeing suffering, um, we're often very biased by the kind of suffering we are willing to acknowledge. So we tend to acknowledge the suffering of people we like or somehow feel uh, are experiencing some kind of injustice. And we also um, uh, tend to, you know, look, I think we tend to kind of look at people from the point of view of those who share our political views or those who will feel compassion for, but if that we don't agree with them, then somehow it's much more difficult to, to generate compassion. And I'm not talking about pity, and that's really important to kind of distinguish. I think Rinpoche spoke about that. So, um, so really, um, from the beginning aspect of um, generating compassion, we start small because we look too deep in our capacity. So we don't start out with grandiose ideas of what we can do. And also um, being focused too much on taking action before we've really clarified and purified the generation of the kind of altruistic emotion is not maybe so helpful. So, um, so really um, when we begin working with compassion, we start really from an aspirational perspective before we move into the practiced. So we um, really deepen and develop our aspiration to be compassion which um, um, develops the capacity. Um, it really um, begins to connect us and, and develop the capacity. So especially if um, maybe um, it is, if you're a person who's like, a, sorry, I'm just gonna say, so I guess the, one of the questions you had was about people who maybe don't generally feel compassion, like how do they begin to do it? And I think uh, Rinpoche really emphasized um, the, in the Buddhist view, um, you must first develop a wholesome relationship to yourself, actually. Because he said, being compassionate is not about denying the self or being um, self-sacrificing. You're not martyring yourself for the betterment of others. And he said, so first there needs to be a very actually wholesome relationship to the self. And, 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 and a, you work from the basis that uh, expressing compassion is very nourishing for you as well as nourishing for others. And, um, and so that's where the deepening of capacity really also kind of comes in. So um, I think it might be helpful just to talk a little bit about um, bodhicitta. Uh, before we introduce the practice related to the four Brahma Viharas or the four immeasurable qualities because um, this is just a little bit of structural understanding you know that helps so with bodhicitta of which compassion and wisdom are the two essential aspects um, bodhicitta in in the Buddhist view is expressed um, or has two main kind of expressions there's absolute bodhicitta and then there is relative um, bodhicitta, which is more kind of a, at a worldly level. And essentially, absolute bodhicitta is, is the awakened mind, is just enlightened mind. Um, a relative bodhicitta, however, which is um, really for most of us <laughs> the only kind of form of bodhicitta that we, um, that we, be, we certainly begin to practice, um, is... Uh, divided also into two sections. There's uh, relative bodhicitta has the aspirational phase 
And in Buddhism, uh, in the sutras, they talk about um, this is where you are preparing to take a journey. And the uh, in practice or, or bodhicitta in practice. Well, <clears throat> so this is <clears throat> in, in the sutras they talk about this is when you actually commence the journey. And the in practice aspect of bodhicitta is the six parameters. So you have um, generosity, moral discipline, patience, vigor, meditative concentration and insight or knowledge. Um, so, so there's lots of teachings on the six parameters. But um, really when you're beginning, even the parameters we are only beginning to be able to practice. You, you begin really with the aspirational aspect. So you're developing um, you're developing really from the inside. You're beginning to exercise your capacity to feel certain aspects and, and you're really developing your aspiration to be of benefit to others and um, to, to generate compassion. So, um, so in, in Buddhist, Buddhism, really the traditional way you begin doing this is by practicing what is known as the four Brahma Viharas or um, the four immeasurable qualities. Uh, um, Brahma Vihara actually is like abode of the gods, I think, in Sanskrit, um, because um, uh, these um, four immeasurable qualities are seen to transcend, you know, um, the constraints of our human kind of aspects or the samsaric realm. So the four Brahma Viharas essentially are love or loving kindness, um, immeasurable compassion, uh, immeasurable joy and immeasurable equanimity or um, impartiality. Uh, I personally prefer impartiality because it just feels um, easier to understand. So really we begin to practice with the four Brahma Viharas in, um, in meditation. So, uh, and, and through that, it really is considered a very purifying practice this one. So we're starting to become aware of our bias of how we view things and how we like and we don't like, how we are attracted to something and not attracted to other things, how we might be easy to feel compassion for someone we like and love, but not so easy for someone we don't have that same feeling for. So when you, um, I, I probably, I can, um, would uh, encourage people to, to kind of seek instruction from a qualified Lama on this practice, but in a very nuts and bolts form. And there is actually a Mind at Ease. It's a book that was written by Trilag Rinpoche. He gives very uh, detailed instructions on this practice. So, um, um, so that is really worth finding um, if you wish to really seriously begin to work with this practice. But from a very simple point of view, when you begin to practice with the four Brahma Viharas, you actually begin with um, immeasurable equanimity or immeasurable impartiality and we begin with that because with love and compassion and joy um, yeah we've got all kinds of things happening about ourselves and others and so um, so really at first you're looking just to um, create a spacious kind of openness Rinpoche said and he said it's not even that you you know, feel the same all the time. That's not, not what equanimity is. Certainly, he said, maybe the ups and downs get a little bit rounded, but um, it's more just a kind of a spacious presence that you're looking to um, kind of develop the capacity to generate. And so um, when we practice with the Brahma Viharas, we, there are three objects of meditation. Um, the first one is the, um, someone we love or like. The second object of meditation is someone who we don't like or we feel afraid of or, you know, um, and the third one is someone for whom our feeling is quite neutral, like maybe someone you don't know very well who's not threatening in any way or something like that. Um, because really, you know, um, uh, when you begin to work like this and look at it, you begin to say, consider how really um, you know people you love can become your enemy overnight and people who were once your enemies can then become your friend 
and the child that you raise with love and diligence may end up not speaking to you for the next 20 years. So we have, um, you know, like the our nature of our relationships are not stable. They're changing all the time. And um, part of um, really contemplating the equanimity is to become familiar with this um, and, and, um, and be able to kind of abide in that somewhat. Um, so um, when you are meditating on these, really, you know, say with the first object with someone that you love, you're looking at the evolution of your relationship. Look at the time when you didn't know this person or, um, and how they came into your life when you didn't know them very well and maybe you didn't like them when you first met them. You know, you just begin to kind of consider these kinds of things. And, um, and then gradually, you know, like this is a kind of a practice really that you should do, you could do, I should say, every day. You could do it every day. And um, gradually you just begin to see the changeability of things. So I'm not gonna kind of go into the practice in a lot of detail, um, but um, it's quite simple and it's a really good beginning point because it's really just about becoming aware of um, how we prefer some things and don't prefer others. Uh, and really, really, if we're um, deepening our capacity to generate compassion, then we need to develop some awareness about this, really. Um, and that's really um, a Buddhist view from the be beginner's point of view, like for us beginners. Mm -hmm.